Thank you for tuning in to The Truth With Trinity, and I am your host, Trinity, and if this is your first time tuning into the podcast, I'd like to send you a warm welcome. Here I talk about issues that happen within the Black community, hopefully for some resolution, or at least some food for thought to go about your daily way. So without further ado, I'd like to jump into this episode's topic, which is the consequences of dating a dope dealer, or... I didn't know what to name it or why black women should think twice before dating a dope dealer. Um, Before I get started, I'm going to make a small disclaimer. This does not apply uh, to every black man nor every black woman. And there are some exceptions to the rule. Okay. So I want to get started by first sending a special thanks out um, to all my young ladies that may be listening, you know, um, that will be successful or are already successful, professional, uh, wanting to start their own business, um, wanting to be a wife, or that young lady that may be listening that wants to turn her life around and go in a different, more positive direction. And not only that, um, I find that there's a lot of material that talks about, you know, who black women date. But there's not a lot of material that explains to our, especially our young ladies, on why not to. So in this episode, I like to go into detail. I'm going to make it as short as possible. So if you could bear with me on why not to date or the consequences thereof of dating um, a guy that deals drugs, which is interchangeable with thug, uh, a person that engages in criminal activity, okay? So, I wanted to first start off by saying what keeps black people, so this is men and women, what keeps black people psychologically bound is images and idols that we enact in our everyday lives that aren't a part of reality. So, a lot of us, what we're seeing on TV, we embody that and enact that in our everyday lives, and this is not going to be successful in reality, what happens every day, okay? Black people as a whole must stop viewing what they see in movies, TV shows, and music videos, thinking that what they see on screen is reality. When nine times out of ten, those celebrities aren't outliving the life they promote on TV. And even if they are, many of them aren't alive today to continue to tell you about it. The roles that black video vixens portray are no more beneficial to the black man as street hustlers, thugs, and dope dealers provide security. Neither are realistic in producing successful black families. Okay, so as black women, a lot of times we like to, you know, complain that, you know, our brothers, they want to, they want a, a, a dime piece 10 and, and that's not going to be beneficial to, to what they see on TV as far as what makes a successful wife and mother to their children. And I think, you know, a lot of black men are complaining now that, you know, or have been complaining that black women, what they see on TV, that they're expecting these thugs and images of gold diamond bracelets and um, uh, uh, suitcases full of cash in real life. Okay. And this dangerous way of living. So both sides is not beneficial to our black families. Okay. I'm not here to judge you or our brothers out here. Okay. Neither am I saying we are better than them. Okay. So I'm not saying if you see a brother on the street, you know, that you can't say hi. I'm not saying that that we're better than them or any of that. Okay. Um, but what I am saying is that your life is better than the situations that stem from surrounding yourself around men who live that lifestyle. Okay. Four, when the black woman rises to the conscious level that she deserves better, it will motivate the black man to become better. Which leads me back into the episode's topic, the consequences of dating a dope dealer. It's one thing to just scream out to black women, hey, don't date thugs or drug dealers, okay? Like I said, you hear that all the time, right? Don't date them, okay? But in this episode, I like to go in detail, into detail, and explain why it isn't such a great idea or the consequences that go along with dating a thug. Okay, but first, 
let's go over the typical reasons why dating drug dealers may seem attractive, okay? He's got the bad boy image, okay? So, you know, especially good girls, they're known for, you know, what, no, take a walk on the wild side. You know, it can be kind of boring, uh, uh, living um, the same thing every day, and you want something different, okay? Or this may be a young lady that is surrounded her family members may be heavily um, affiliated in the street life. So this may be all she sees um, that is typically uh, the norm for her and her surroundings. Um, also, um, th thugs may be attractive because they make quick money, okay? Or large sums of money in a quick amount of time. Uh, if you smoke or if you, you know, engage in drugs yourself, this may be lucrative for you because you may get discounted drugs from your boyfriend or you may get free drugs. Okay. Uh, bad boys are known for being great physically in bed. Okay. So this is a stereotype, not saying that all, um, bad boys are, but this is, you know, these are things that, you know, women have found attractive about, uh, thugs, um, a sense of adrenaline rush being around him okay so walking on the wild side and another thing too i'm not saying that good guys may not be physically great in bed but like i said this is kind of like a stereotype so we're not gonna we're not gonna go too far into that but just saying um also a sense of not knowing what will happen next also known as suspense so you know like i said taking that walk on the wild side not not knowing what's going to happen next can be attractive sometimes okay um Although on a temporary basis or situation, this may seem just fine. So all those attributes I just named about, you know, what, excuse me, what seems attractive about a thug. So this seems on a temporary basis, fine. Okay. And great. But what happens when stability is needed? Because after all, especially when children start coming into the picture, Women are naturally inclined to need an accountable man and family structure. Whereas things were more carefree in a woman's younger days or child-free days, okay? So when you're young, you don't have any children, all those things seem great, but things begin to take a, a, a nasty turn once you start needing more stability and seriousness from a man, okay? So let's go over the negatives that typically come with involving ourselves with street men which is interchangeable with thug, dope dealer, et cetera, et cetera. They, so number one, they are typically not wired or set up for long-term relationships or marriage or having a family. As black women, we can fool ourselves, okay, by having this mentality that says, I can fix or turn him into what I want him to be, okay? Um, when in reality, we as women should accept people, okay, especially when we're talking about men, for who they are and not try to imagine them to be something else, okay? So we should take them as face value, okay? When we see them and how they are, you know, what they're showing us is, us is who they are, okay? And not try to change them. Uh, dope dealers are known for having criminal records, they are known for going back and forth to court and serving lengthy jail sentences. And all this may seem romantic, waiting and being loyal to a guy uh, to be released from a three to 10 year sentence. But if your children should come about, so if you have children, okay, so if you should have children out of these type of situations, okay, you risk having a child who doesn't know his father, okay? And you also risk why the father's in jail, okay, you um, increasing your risk of becoming a multiple baby daddy type of child's mother. Because if he's in jail, you know, he's got a lengthy jail sentence. You get with the next guy, but you promised your first child's father that's in jail, hey, I'll wait out for you. I'll be there for you. He's in there five to 10 or 20 years or three or seven however long he's in there you get with the next guy you have a need to be in a relationship you have a need uh, uh for intimacy so you get with the next guy you have a baby by him then the guy the first child's father gets out of jail so then you dump the second child's father get back with the first child's father because of the promise you made to him before he was locked up then you got two child's fathers in turmoil then 
things don't work out with the first child's father because things change between people over time and the fact that he's been incarcerated he might not be the same person he was before he went into jail and and then you're on to baby daddy number three so this increases your risk of um you know having multiple children's fathers dealing with guys from the street okay um thugs have a higher homicide rate so you know none of us are promised to live forever okay we all know this but you know dealing with a guy from the street his incidence of dying is higher thugs have poor morals okay most of them do um to be able to indulge in that and engage in that type of lifestyle for a lengthy amount of time you have to do things and ca cross boundaries and make moves that 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 lack morality um th thugs usually don't have long-term family goals okay thugs have a higher chance of having other families with other women Okay, and that goes back to them not really valuing the longevity and the stability of one nuclear family. You know, they, they have different lifestyles when they're living one way with you. They're out in the street. They're making deals with other women. Um, they're, they're having sex with other women, maybe for drug, a drug exchange, all sorts of things. And they're living a lot of different other lives. And, and that's not to say that other men um, that have different tr types of uh of walks of life can't do this but this is just a higher incidence rate of them feeling like there's nothing wrong with it um dope dealers carry more of a risk of never fathering their children due to long incarceration or a short lifespan okay um this is another point okay um a lot of um thugs and guys that engage in criminal lifestyles are unable to legally build wealth with you so i said legally Okay, so you can get money in here or there, but they're unable to legally sign contracts and homes and businesses will have to go in your name, especially if he doesn't have a legit job or can justify where lump sums of money come from. Any loan approvals would have to be placed in your name because many thugs end up losing or never had their driver's license. Many of their vehicles have to be placed in in your name okay so when i say your name i'm talking about you as a woman okay in retrospect if he should have any accidents in your car that's under your name because even if he paid for it if he has license and ta if he has tags and registration you know that's assigned in your name even though he purchased a car it's legally your car okay so if he has any accidents runs over anybody or just has an accident or be caught with drugs inside vehicles assigned to your name you will also be held responsible which could ultimately ruin your life in the long term having a man who has to vicariously live through you by placing what he purchases in your name can feel more like having a child instead of a man you may also gain a sense of feeling used, okay, or taken advantage of. Also, dating thugs can ruin housing opportunities. Most dope dealers would be more successful with a nine to five job. And, you know, I've stated this before. And, you know, back in the day, which still to me wasn't worth it. But, you know, when we talk about the 90s, when there were more dope dealers that was living this dream of big houses and, you know, things that you couldn't afford by working a nine to five job. But now what we see on average is that a lot of our young brothers are out in the street and they're homeless. They don't have a place to live. So all these dreams of living this mansion lifestyle with all this money, um, it, it quickly dwindles away whatever money they're making and they don't have anything to show for themselves. You know, a lot of them don't even look like they've had a bath or anything like that. They need a place to stay. So a lot of them, it would be more beneficial for them to get a nine to five job. Um, also, thugs usually have a sense of feeling above the law. OK, so they're usually thinking that they can evade the law or, um, you know, just not follow the laws. A stronger likelihood of domestic violence, okay? So I'm not saying that guys that don't engage in this type of lifestyle can't be guilty of uh, domestic violence. But what we have is a higher incidence of guys who engage in this type of lifestyle. They do tend to have a, a, a bit more of a lack of respect for females, women in general. And they do live their life on the wild side in a violent street. 
that maybe you may not have known about when you very first, um, you know, got with this type of guy, but that does increase the risk of physical violence, okay, um, on women, okay, um, life isn't as valuable to these type of guys, so they have a live for today, um, and not for tomorrow mindset, I mean, they have to, a lot of them, you know, especially engage, engaging in the dangerous activities that they do on the street, you know, and these things are a recipe for disaster uh, for many families um, and definitely for uh, what women look for most is stability. That's just the opposite of stability is a live for today and um, not for tomorrow mindset. OK, um, also dating a thug has a high incidence of placing you or your children's lives in danger. So even if you don't have children or if you do have children, OK. Um, if he has enemies that want to re retaliate by attacking those closest to him, okay? So, this goes into you or your children's life could be in danger, okay? We just heard of that incident of, you know, a few months ago of a lady being a, a realtor and getting set up by some of her uh, significant other's enemies. And so, she's lured to a house showing, thinking it's a typical house showing, but these are her significant other's enemies that chose to violate her and then murder her in retaliation uh, to her boyfriend or husband or significant other, okay? So, um, you know, this is, you know, and this could be children as well that are attached along um, um, with these type of, um, lifestyles. Okay. Um, if you are driving or living with him, a high chance of cops making a drug bus with their firearms aimed that leaves you in a potential crossfire. Okay. Cause we hear about that a lot, you know, um, especially nowadays with there being sisters that are linked with brothers that live this type of lifestyle, you know, and she's thinking her life may be separate because she has a nine to five job, but then she's, you know, being associated with him by hanging around him, living around him or letting him live with her and just the bad situations that uh, can transpire about being around these type of guys and how your life can be in danger. Okay. Also dating a thug can ruin the professional career of the woman he is dating. So a lot of females, um, they have the misconception, okay? A lot of black women have the misconception that I can keep my professional life separate. So I can be this nurse, I can be this doctor, I can be uh, this police officer, I can be whatever, this scientist, I can be this professional woman and still have my thug on the side, okay? Um, that I can keep my professional life separate, my boyfriend told me that I would never get caught up if he goes down. So if he gets locked up, he told me that I would never get locked up. This mindset has ruined many women's professional careers, their licenses, and have landed them criminal records and jail time themselves from being involved or affiliated. Okay. Dating a thug opened many women up to being strung out on gateway drugs such as crack, heroin, cocaine, and fentanyl, okay, due to the drugs being so highly accessible to them through their boyfriends, okay. Um, also, to take into consideration, some dope dealers become addicted to the kinds of drugs they claim they never try, okay. So, you know, it's a saying, right, don't get high on your own supply, but some dope dealers may get linked and uh, addicted to their own drugs by having to taste their own product to make sure that it's legit. And then they end up becoming um, addicted or due to stress and t trying it out for the first time, not realizing how addictive it is. And then they become addicted. Um, they may also seek to permanently attach themselves to you and may try to get you addicted to the drugs. OK, so, hey, I don't want her to leave me. I don't want her to ever feel like she's going to live a better lifestyle away from me. I need her for what I need her for. And so I'm going to get her strung out um, on drugs as well. This does happen, okay, by lacing blunts. If you smoke marijuana with LSD or cocaine, okay, placing drugs inside of your favorite drink, okay, and it doesn't necessarily have to be alcohol. These are things that happen and that have happened uh, to women that have um, involved and joined their life um, with these type of men, which leads to the last point 
that dope dealers typically have poor morals. They don't care who they sell to or who, who lives it affects. They usually care more about the rush of a, obtaining money by any means. They have a, a, a deteriorated conscience. So their conscience is totally, um, um, not totally, but um, it's always um, being ate up day by day that they engage in these type of activities. It's being deteriorated. Okay, slowly but surely. So unless you are a woman that, so, that is solely loyal to living a life towards destruction, which there are women. Some women love thugs. They're thugs themselves. And this is their lifestyle. So if, if you're that type of woman, you'll be just fine. But if you're not, okay, if you're not that type of woman, okay, what once seemed alluring, wild, and fun can be destructive to women and families, okay? So if you're not that type of woman that's dedicated to the thug life and you had a mind of having children with a husband and a father that lived there every day and you didn't want to struggle and you didn't want to go back and forth to jail or you didn't want to have to uh, accumulate visitation hours by visiting your child's father in jail um, by letting your children see their father behind bars. If you don't want to live that type of lifestyle, you know, don't think that you're going to date a certain type of man and come out with a different kind of reality, um, basically. Um, also, um, I wanted to leave with a few words of encouragement to our black sisters, okay? Value a man with morals and intelligence, you know, and that's a big one, especially in the African-American community. You know, we're, you know, uh, stereotyped and some of it is true to a certain extent with some of us that we value um, thug life and criminal activities more than a man with intelligence, you know, so he's not, you know, he might not be the hot, hottest guy or maybe he is handsome or we need to basically shift our perception on what we feel is attractive as black women, okay? Um, because to, to date one guy and expect a different outcome is really failing us as black women. Um, we need to start looking at guys that have everyday jobs, okay? So he's not doing anything outrageous. He has a normal everyday job or he successfully owns his own business, okay? Um, he can show and vocalize his goals. So not only can he just talk about his goals, but he has a plan and he's putting into practice what he wants in life, okay? Um, has um, his own place and can provide for himself, okay? So this is a part of being a grown-up to be able to provide for yourself. Has a clean criminal background, okay? Believes in working hard for what he wants. He has more of a crock pot versus a microwave mentality, okay, that nothing worth value comes overnight, you know, because when you got a crock pot, crock pot is slow cooking, and that's what we want, you know, and those make better husbands, someone that understands that the things that they won't just don't just come overnight versus the microwave quick, quick mentality. I got to get it quick, okay, because like I said once before, that nothing of value or worth value comes overnight in the blink of an eye um he has morals and values and believes in god okay wants marriage and long-term family and commitment okay so these should be the things that are on our minds as young black women okay or women period um black women overall um the image we see of black rappers and thugs on videos has been proven to destroy the true image of what a black man should be and also has proven not only to be a hindrance but a death trap to women and future children okay uh, but an unrealistic and unhealthy expectation in creating healthy families that will benefit black women and children and lastly our communities okay so let's make healthy decisions okay um that pretty much concludes this segment i just wanted to tell my young black sisters you know i love you all i love my brothers out there um if you're listening on youtube 
let me know what you think down in the comment section. Also, I wanted to take time to thank all my subscribers and listeners, uh, new, new and old. And also, if you haven't subscribed yet and you liked what you heard, you can hit the subscribe, like, and share button. Um, if you'd like to make a financial contribution or if you have any questions or suggestions, you can contact me at thetruthwithtrinity.com. You can also listen to my podcast on YouTube, Spotify, and Anchor. And always remember, if you can't tell the truth with anyone else, you can with Trinity. Till next time, take care.